Hey guys, welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Restoring Vintage Black and White Televisions with a focus on a late 40s Admiral TV. In the last installment, we successfully pulled the chassis out of the cabinet, discovered that they appear to be all original, no work having been done other than maybe swap some tubes out, and we also found a label inside the cabinet telling us the exact model number. Now this installment is going to focus on finding accurate service info for that model. Now the model we found was 30C15-S and we know it's Admiral so that's our make and our model. Admiral 30C15S. Also on the chassis it's stamped 30 C1-S. That's the chassis. The model is 30C15. The chassis is 30C1. And it has a D stamped all over the place on the chassis so we know it's production run D. They made a number of production run changes so we have the D variation. Now before we hop on the internet and look for service info, I also want to recommend some reading info to you, in particular this book, Basic Television from Bernard Grob. This is the third edition from 64. I'm pretty confident that every circuit and every TV that I have ever worked on so far is covered in this book. If you want to just focus on black and white TVs, earlier TVs, you might want to get the first or second edition. The 64 edition introduces color, some early solid state stuff, some selenium rectifiers versus tube rectifiers, that kind of thing, and some of the more advanced circuit designs like gated AGC, which means for a particular project a lot of the info in this is not pertinent whereas the earlier editions will be more focused on just the, the black and white kind of stuff. However, I already flipped through this. Every single circuit in this TV we are going to restore is detailed and described in this book. From the horizontal sink circuit, the vertical integrator, the sink separator, it's all covered in here. Now as far as how readable is this for a beginner, yeah, some of it is a little esoteric, a little um, obscure, especially if you're not that familiar with tube circuits. I don't understand 100% of what I'm reading, but it does cover everything. You might also want to get a book, I can't recommend a specific one because there's a whole lot of them out there, but a more basic book on concepts. There are also books out there that are crammed with formulas that don't talk about a whole lot of practical circuits. This is a good strike between the two. A little bit of math, a little bit of formulas, definitely a whole lot of example circuits and a description of all of them. I'll uh, pull out one of them for you. The horizontal synchro glide, I believe it's called. All right, this right here where it says DC control tube synchro guide. This is the horizontal AFC circuit used in our set. For years I thought it was synchro glide because I never read it carefully, but synchro guide. This details how it actually works and the waveforms you might see. And hey, that looks exactly like the coil that's in our TV. So, excellent, excellent book. Plenty of copies of this floating around out there. I don't know if I got this used on Amazon or off of eBay or it might have been donated. Regardless, uh, it's an excellent, excellent book. All right, now let's hunt for some service info. All righty, now that we have identified the make, the model, the chassis revision of our set, we want to find some service info. Ideally, very detailed accurate service info. Now back in the 40s and 50s, TV servicing was a thriving industry and there were a number of companies that put out service info for the repair shops. 
The original equipment manufacturers, the OEMs, certainly did, at least for the big guys. So Admiral published service info. I'm not sure how you would get it. Maybe it would be an authorized service center. I'm not sure. But it's out there. There's also Riders. You may be familiar with the Riders Compendium of Radio Service Info. Well, they also did it for TVs. There's Sam's Photo Fact. Sam's, unlike Riders, would actually buy the TV, take photographs of it, reverse engineer it, drop their own schematics. Riders would just republish the OEM info. And generally, it's not as good looking. Uh, whatever they had to do to rescan it, scale it, it's generally a little bit, a little more muddy. And then if you get a scanned copy online, it can be even muddier and harder to read. But we'll see what we can find. There's also Wallace Tellyaid and Beatman's Most Often Needed and maybe one or two others. Well, regardless... I recommend you start your search at the Early Television Museum website. This is the place I go to once or twice a year, and I've recorded videos. It's where I get um, uh, some of my TVs. It's uh, well worth the trip, not only just to see TVs, but to buy TVs and to get parts. We'll talk about that in a moment. All right, so if you go to the main website, earlytelevision.org, on the left-hand side there are some navigation links. They have one for post-war TV, and underneath that, down near the bottom, they have technical info, technical information. Click on that. You will come to a page with a bunch of links on it. Up at the top, there are some indexes, the first one being the Writer's Index of TV Service Data. If we click on that, we see a bunch of different makes. What this is, this, these are scans of the writer's index that they put out, which lists basically every TV model chassis revision ever made by everyone. It's a great resource just to see what's out there. Whether or not you're looking for service info, if you want to know all the, the different variations and whatever, and all the manufacturers that ever existed, they're in here. So I clicked on the very first link, Admiral. We are looking for a 30C1. I don't see it. However, if you look closer, this gets a little confusing because they list everything by both the, the TV model number but also the chassis revision. So on the bottom right, we are actually seeing some 30C1 links. But the models, 4H, 19C, and so on, well, if you don't know the, the cabinet model, we keep digging through this eventually we get to an area here where it's just chassis I think the third link is going to be the charm zoom in a bit and yeah I'm seeing 30 so 30 C1 chassis is covered in volume 3 section 17 and below that there is C4-1 which means the initial info was in volume 3 and there's a supplement in volume 4 okay so you could run out and find a copy of Riders Volume 3 on eBay or some such. You can buy a scanned copy of Volume 3 or all the volumes I think on eBay. Or we can go back and instead of looking at the index, we can go and look at the actual Admiral link here. Some of the models, some of the chassis have been scanned by contributors myself included, they're at number three, scanned and submitted to the museum. Riders does not exist anymore. A lot of these manufacturers don't exist anymore. I don't think any of this stuff is copyrighted, so it has been scanned and uploaded here. However, let's see, do they have the 30C1? Uh, now, they don't have 30C1 listed here. However, I just happen to know through my digging around there is no specific 30C1. What they did is they combined 30A1, 30B1, 30C1, and 30D1, and it's all in Viders Volume 3. So it is actually here, free to download the link. You get a PDF, and this is what it looks like. 
All right, so this is a scanned copy of the Rider Service Info. And this one is revised, so it's probably a later issue of the publication. Now, right up top is where things get confusing. This was the Wild West of TV days. They were cranking out different models and different revisions and production runs very rapidly. So if we look at this upper left, this section applies to the following models. There's a whole bunch of models listed and chassis. And we do see the 30C1 15S is listed. However, they say some models not listed above in the 4H, 30B, and 30C series use other chassis numbers. You see stamping on chassis and refer to the manual for that chassis. And as we start looking down, we start seeing more and more. Well, what they did is they combined a bunch of very, very similar models and revisions and production runs into one volume. So we look at the very first thing up here. It's a tube layout. This does not match what we have. They show two 6K6 tubes. And above it, it says this power supply used in the television radio funnel combination only. We don't have that. Next to it, this power supply is used in HC11, HC12, HC13 combinations, and all straight television models. That's not what we have either. It's very similar, but we'll, we'll keep going. And then below that, we see something that does actually match what we have seen. We have two 5U4s. This also has two 6K6s, not quite what we have. 5Y3, 5U4, not quite what we have. So we're going to have to get a closer look at the our chassis and our tube chart in the manual. Also, I believe the tuner up here, they show with three 6J6 tubes. And then they have another tuner with three these three tubes and then another tube tuner with these two tubes. So we're going to have to compare reality to what we see on the printed info. And if down below they mention about there being different picture tubes and... Oh, and they immediately jump into some troubleshooting tips. And if we keep going past that, we get more troubleshooting. And they mention different chassis that it applies to. This is not fun. <laughs> and then we get into production changes. But only for the 30A1, we have a 30C1, so we keep going. Again, only in the 30A1, we keep going. Uh-oh. Now we have production changes, including the 30C1. This is where we get into those stamps on there. Different 12-inch picture tubes used. Chassis 30C1 only. Uh-oh, that's what we have. At various points, they use the 12BP4, 12LP4, 12TP4, 12KP4, 12QP4. I can tell you from my experience, I've only ever seen a 12LP4. But, these are all possible. So, it's unfortunate. This is from the horse's mouth. This is from Admiral. This is what they put out. So this should be the, the most accurate comprehensive service info there is. So we're just going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to very carefully compare the tube lineup to what we see here. And when we start looking at the schematic, look for any production changes, identify all the parts, make sure everything matches up. All that aside... It actually is pretty good service info once you decipher and find what is applicable to your exact model. I say that because we now get a nice block diagram where they break down what each tube is for. V203, for example, is the ratio detector for the sound. V205 is the audio output amp. 
V305 was a video detector in DC Restore. This will be very handy for us down the road. And if we keep going, they also break down every block of the TV and describe how it works. For example, the sync separator tube 6AU6, an RC coupled circuit is used in the sync separator. Fixed bias is supplied by a selenium bias rectifier, and so on. Read through this. Even if you don't understand a lot of it, it's good to familiarize yourself with what you're dealing with. And they have some rather nice photos or stylized drawings. I'm not sure exactly what you call these. And we get into a parts list. Unfortunately, they combine the A1, the B1, the C1, the D1. <laughs> so, and then they put little symbols next to it. So, this may or may not match what we see. And you're going to see throughout this, they have asterisks, they have exclamation points, they have hash marks, they have little crosses. All sorts of things for all the different variations. Annoying. Generally, what I would recommend you do is go with what you see. If it looks like it's an original part and you can read the value off of it, go with that over what you see in this list. This is why it's so nice to get a pristine, unworked on chassis. If it's been worked on and they clipped out a part and put a new part in and it doesn't match what you see here, you have a tough decision to make. The thought being, well, somebody fixed it, it must have worked, and they kept watching it, so it must be the right value. Maybe, or maybe they tried to fix it and it didn't work right, and they just used what they had on hand. Generally, you can go back to the original maker's service info and trust it. But I'm just warning you, as much as I like at these Admiral sets and recommend you work on them, it's not always so easy. Now, one good thing is, yes, they use six different picture tubes and they use three different tuners and all that. But the, the variation we have, I believe, is what I think the vast majority are because that's all that I've ever seen. I know others that have gotten the early tuners, but they seem to be pretty rare. Anyways, as I'm scrolling through this, they list every single cabinet Part screw, nut, knob, everything. That's why this is going on and on and on and on and on. That's so you can order these parts of your repair center. And hey, we need a replacement escutcheon for the channel number indicator. We need a, we have a missing a screw. You could order it from Admiral and you could replace it. Finally, finally, 25 pages in, we start seeing a schematic. And this is where it gets complicated because we have to. You can see they have insets saying early circuits used this. This this is this flavor of tuner. We're going to have to uh, find what matches what we see. An early circuit for a video detector and so on. So this is the riders. This was a reprint of the Admiral. This is the most comprehensive. We're only halfway through. The, we're not even halfway through the document. It keeps going. I'm just going to start jumping ahead. So now we're going to get other chassis variations. We're getting more troubleshooting guides, alignment info, how to set up the various coils and adjustments inside, more sweep alignment info. And this covers the combi unit, so it's going to have some info about the radio. It's going to have some info uh, about the phonograph. And on and on and on and on and on. It's daunting. It's 74 pages. We will probably only carry, care about a small portion of this. Towards your back, you get into all these troubleshooting guides. If the image on your screen is squished, you have a lack of height. Adjust the height control. Some of them are... Uh, I was going to say idiotic. That's not fair. They're, they're very basic. <laughs> they're, they're, they're assuming you don't know anything. Too much height, adjust the height control. Okay, those are easy ones. Some of these aren't quite so easy. Adjust the linearity. Adjust the horizontal drive. Uh, some of these get start getting more and more subtle about uh, what the issue is and how to adjust it. And they have a troubleshooting chart. If you have no sound but the picture's okay, check these tubes in the audio section. And so on. 
Personally, I've never really used one of these troubleshooting guides because, again, some of it's pretty obvious. If you don't have sound, you might want to check the sound circuit. Uh, most of it's in that category. We get to waveform analysis. They do have scope images. Like I said, this is very, very comprehensive. So I will break out the scope and when we get this thing start to working and we can poke around and we can see if we can get these images on our scope. You don't get this level. Some, some sets, uh, worst case scenario, you just get a, maybe a one-page schematic and that's all you have to work off of. This is really nice. Now, the other big player in service info is Sam's PhotoFact, who would actually buy the set and drop their own schematics from scratch. Two places you can get it. One, Sam's PhotoFact is still in business. You can go to their website and order it. If you get a scanned PDF copy that's emailed to you, it is, I think, 18 bucks, something like that. Or, if you were to, say, go to the early television museum swap fest, you might be able to buy a copy there or ask other collectors online, or hop onto eBay. And if I search for Admiral 30A1, and see what we find. Hey, look at that. They made a lot of these sets. There's a lot of copies of the service that are floating around. In fact, hey, look at that. Yeah, it's $39.99 plus shipping, but here is a copy of the original Admiral service info. That's pretty cool. But right next to it for nine bucks or best offer is the Sam's photo fact. So this is a hard copy from the late 40s, 50s. So this is the real deal. So it will be a high quality scan. It'll be very legible. I think I have a copy floating around here. So we'll take a look at that. And Sam's, like Riders, see if we can read this. They combined the 30A1, the 30B1, the 30C1, and, and so on, and different models into one manual. And this has the same deal with the various tuners and all that. So this is just as confusing. In fact, more because this is probably condensed down to about 15 pages versus 75. On the plus side, I just love a nice three-page fold-out schematic. Which would I recommend? Ugh, actually, I don't really like either one of these. I like uh, the third option. All right, so what do I like to use when I can? Well, that would be a Wallace Telaid, which is a nice large form factor, very easy to read, accurate. I think it's basically a reprint of the original manufacturer series info, but laid out a little bit differently. A little hard to find, and the bindings are often falling apart. I have a few copies that I've acquired over the years. And some nice things. One has a nice index, or for a first off, it's broken down by brand and then years. So there'll be another volume of Admiral Volume 2 that's 52 to somewhere later in the 50s and then right on the, uh, the inside they list every make every model so we should be able to find ours in here if we poke around so page two I guess we made quite a few variations Oh no, I was on this page, I just missed it. Put right up here, 30C15S. So that's what we have. Now, one thing that's a little odd is that they do have very nice big clear schematics, but parts list, they only list electrolytics, basically, and a few coils, transformers. But they lump them all together, and they're right up front. <laughs> so here's replacement parts. It, that, that's a little weird. Also, service tips, alignment info is sort of interleaved throughout this. 
but most of it is nice big clear schematics for example here's this model 17 t1 now regardless of what source you go with i highly recommend you make copies of this go to kinko's or some one of your whatever your favorite local print shop is and get nice big large clear copies because then you can say use a highlighter marker on it without ruining the original or put notes, put voltage readings, chuck off parts as you replace them, identify them and so on. And we'll look through here, eventually we will find 30C1. Actually I already have a copy that's falling apart and I took it out. Now there are a few variations as we've already seen. So this is a correct diagram for 30A1, 30B1, or 30C1 with 94C8-2 tuner for off television only sets with 10 and 12 inch picture tubes. So I think that covers what we have. So here's our nice schematic. I have a few insets of alternate circuits from all the production run changes. I'm looking kind of curious down here. They have a tube chart layout. Zoom in a little. So the power supply and TV chassis. They show two variations. One is push-pull output, push-pull output rather with two 6K6s for the combo radio phono. We don't have that. We have the single. So they show it looking like this. It's not quite what ours looks like though. I just happen to have it right here. So we have two big square transformers, rectangular transformers, which looks just like this version. But the tube socket layout looks like this version. However, there's one thing that I noticed right away when I pulled this chassis out. Tubes. We've got these nice big old Coke bottle ST type tubes. These are both 5U4s. That's a 6K6, that's a 6SJ7 preamp. Power transformers, rectifiers, filter choke, filter electrolytics, audio output transformer, and the speaker plugs in right there. However, the tube chart does not show two 5U4s. It shows a 5Y3 and a 5U4. Now, oftentimes, if you look on the chassis, there will be some indication of what tube type should go into the socket. And if it didn't originally, some service tech may have written it in over the years. Well, if we look really close, scrape away some of the dirt, stamped on here, 6Y6G, speaker. That, hard to read, but that says 5Y3 GT. Now, a 5U4, I believe, does have the same pinout. So I suspect this worked fine. But one issue with that, potential issue, is that this tube, well, it's bigger, it's beefier, it draws more current for the filament. I think 3 amps versus 2 amps for a 5Y3. It's going to strain this transformer a little bit. So we'll be putting the proper type in there. Other than that, nothing has jumped out at me. I'm going to leave off with some more reading recommendations. So whichever site you decide to go to, be it Sam's, Riders, Wallace, or even potentially uh, a Beatman's, what that looks like. These are neat, but they're horrible to work with because you have to basically destroy the binding to use them as you <laughs> flatten them out. So the uh, schematics tend to scan a couple pages, but it's another compendium publication. They're all scanned, they're all available online. Um, in the next installment, we're going to pick up with looking more at the schematic and identifying what we see on the schematic with what we see in the real world on the chassis. More of what I just showed you, where we identify tubes in the tube chart. Find them on the chest. We want to look for any more anomalies. And we're going to talk a bit about safety. And maybe, if we get around to it, we'll touch the picture tube finally. While looking for all the service info, I came across a lot of publications I've picked up over the years. 
basically anything written by Bernard Grob or Milton Kiver is going to be well worth your time reading. Television Simplified by Milton Kiver. It's a fantastic book. Sam's Photo Fact put out a television course servicing televisions. I'm sure there were numerous editions. This is one of the earlier ones. Really, really good stuff in here. Likewise, Beatman's put out a television serving, servicing course, rather, which is also very similar to Sam's. Very good. It's broken down into lessons. I think there's a little quiz at the end of each section. Good stuff. And here's another book by Milton Kiver, How to Understand and Use TV Test Instruments. Fantastic, especially if you want to use vintage test equipment. People are always asking me, where do I hook this piece of equipment up in the TV? This entire book is just about where do you hook up the probe on your meter to test certain things. Also some really nifty photographs of vintage test equipment all throughout this entire book. So they show the ICO, the Heath Kit, Precision Apparatus Company, so on. A lot of stuff that would be very familiar to you if you've ever looked for vintage test equipment on eBay or Hamfest or whatnot. So, there you go. That's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching.